Isn't it amazing that God could consider you and I worthy of all of his wisdom? To me, this is the key, this is the a key part of our of our conversation together. That God is actually considering us to be so valuable and so important to him that he says. I'm going to give my wisdom to you in the form of Jesus. I'm going to give my wisdom to you so that you can use my wisdom completely in your life. And when you answer problems, bring solutions, reveal the power of God, show the great love of God through wisdom, that angelic hosts and rulers and principalities will Observe it and marvel that we, just normal human people, have this great gift and this great grace that God has given us. You know, I, I remember uh, um, some years ago the Lord um, gave us gave me a revelation. It was sparked off by by a teaching that I heard someone do, and uh, you know, it it's like. When the devil came into the Garden of Eden and he saw man that was created as this amazing spirit being with all of the glory on him, you know, he must have looked at this man and said, what a, what a wimp or what a, what a, what a, how is it possible that God could take all of his glory and put himself into a, a being made from sand? Not only is he made from sand, but he's stuck to the ground. Look at us spirits. We can fly and speed of light. We can move around in the eternal realms. We can, we can move from the glory and the presence of God to the depths of darkness. The, and all of the universe and all of the heavens, we can move around and we are operating with other spirit beings and created creatures. And yet, here's this man who's got to stay stuck in one place. He's got to walk around. He's got to live in an environment that is specially created for his body. He can't fly. He can't do anything. And yet this man is the demonstration of the glory of God. And yes, that's you, man. You, man and woman. It's you. God has given you and me this amazing gift of his eternal wisdom, his glory. And it was all possible because the spirit being of Christ became flesh and walked and lived amongst us and died for us so that we could have this amazing wisdom. I need to read to you verse 11 in Ephesians so that it kind of completes the picture. So, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God, verse 10, might be made known by the church to, to principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose the purpose that was before the beginning, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he accomplished this great thing in Jesus when Jesus came and died for us, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Jesus made it all possible. And now because of Jesus, we have boldness and confidence to come before God and say, this amazing wisdom, I take it. I take it, I receive it, I use it, I'm going to walk in it, I'm going to live with it because it has everything for me that I need in every area of my life. Believer, I want to say to you, if you get information, it's a good thing. Information is good. Knowledge based on information, also good. The understanding of how information and knowledge work together on any given situation, it's good. But everybody in the earth can do that. Everybody in the earth can get information, can get knowledge, can have an understanding of how those things can work together to provide some answers, some solutions, and momentum. The real, the real key is to combine those, those things in the revelation of Christ and all of the knowledge that's in Christ and bring wisdom 
bring solutions that are beyond just human experience and human information and knowledge, beyond the understanding of piecing things together. But you do things that create something supernatural, something that is only God's way of solving problems. Thank you for listening.